Today we're going to be making a lightweight concrete countertop with custom edges. Uh, the custom edges being Low Marbles 710 mold. The concrete we're going to be using is excess precast with the precast modifier. The whole thing covers around 7 square feet. We're only going to be using half of it today. And the dye we're going to be using is the True Color Sun Buff dye from Sherecrete. Mold release is going to be Glow Marbles G1. It's a 30 to 1 ratio, so 30 parts water, 1 part uh, G1 is very, very concentrated. Then we're going to need the SCR, sorry, you can't, there you go. SCR, um, that's basically like a mild degreaser. Use it to clean the mold after you uh, demold it, and it takes off all the excess stain, all the basically everything you don't want on there. After we clean it with the SCR, we're going to put some Eco Stain Espresso, which is going to give it the, the nice finish touch with the colors. And at the very end, we're going to seal the whole thing with XS327 Matte Sealer. Now you're also going to need some high density foam. I'll tell you what for later. And most likely you're going to want an industrial bucket because when you're mixing the whole thing, if you're doing it with an electronic mixer, you're going to destroy the whole bucket. Everything's going to get everywhere. It's going to get messy. It's going to be up here. Right now we're going to be making the actual mold, which is going to be approximately 30 by 17 inches. Now since our mold on this end is going to have some 90 degree angles, we're going to have to cut 45 degree angles into the actual mold into some corners.
Once you're done cutting all your uh, cutting all your pieces off the mold, you're gonna want to stick it to the board, which you're gonna do with double side tape, which is available on glowmarble.com. But before you do that, you're gonna want to clean the actual box you have with denatured alcohol or acetone. to get rid of any dirt or anything. It's also gonna make the double side tape stick better to the, to the boards. Now you're gonna take the double side tape and you're gonna fasten it to the wall starting from the bottom. You're gonna to wanna to cover the entire, the entire wall basically. First layer is going to be all the way at the bottom. And now the next step is going to be to take the back of the mold that you just cut, and you got to cover that with the nature of alcohol. This is going to make sure that it sticks best as possible to the double side and doesn't come off and ruin your entire project. Then you're going to take the red side of your tape and peel it off just like this. Now I don't know if you can see, but there's still tape on that side. I'm just taking off the protective cover of the red part. take the pieces and we'll carefully put them on. Now notice that imperfection right here. How we're going to fix that is we're going to take some of this caulk and just put it inside there. That was a bit much. We'll wipe off the rest a little bit later. But then you're going to take like a sponge, a piece of sponge, and make it look as natural as possible. Now we might have a few problems with the rounded part right here because the force of the concrete might push it out. It's going to leak out into over here it's not going to be too pretty so we're going to take some industrial molding clay and just make some foundations around here i preheated this clay so that it's uh, it's a lot softer right now while i'm using it and once it dries up it's going to get stiffer it's going to it's going to be a nice support
Now the vast majority of the inside of this countertop is gonna be hollowed out, and that's why we're gonna be using the high density foam. We're gonna measure out the dimensions of the, um, of the countertop, and we're gonna subtract on every single end three quarters of an inch. Now once we've cut our pieces, what we're going to do is we're going to pour around three quarters of an inch of concrete onto the actual melamine. We're going to take our pieces, put it onto the concrete we poured, and then pour around the edges like this. And it's going to make the concrete countertop look like it's two inches, but in actuality it's a whole lot less concrete and it's going to be a lot, uh, a lot more lightweight. Now we're going to make our 30 to 1 ratio of G1, and uh, first we're going to mix it Shake it up. Remember, it's one part G1, 30 parts water. It's very concentrated. And it's going to get milky white like this. Now we're going to take our G1 with a brush and we're going to apply it to the rubber parts only. Try not to get any onto the melamine itself. We are not going to need any of this on there. Um, the concrete's not going to stick to it at all, to the white part right here. And if we get any of this release onto there, it might create some blotches, some spots that we're not going to want. Uh, you're going to have to remove it afterwards. It's, it's too much hassle. Now once we put the release on our mold, we're going to want to take some denatured alcohol and uh, go across the melamine. Make sure that there's absolutely no release on it. Now just in case, instead of doing half, we're going to make three quarters because it's better to have too much than too little and have to go back. Pour out a little bit. Make sure to shake this real nice. Now we're going to put in our sun buff. And you're going to want to mix that in real nice with the, with the modifier. And then we'll take the, um, the actual precast and we're going to put in three quarters. Now the consistency of the actual concrete is going to be very, very good if you follow all the instructions, so you're not going to need to wa uh, add any water into it.
What's happening right now is this uh, this concrete doesn't need any type of vibration table, any vibration motors. Um, as long as you massage it like this, then there's not going to be any bubbles on your surface. And it's very important to focus in on those corners right there and anywhere where there's going to be a lot of air pockets usually forming. And then we take the uh, high density foam and we lay it out three quarters of an inch from each angle. From each of those sides. Now you want to take that concrete and put it into the corners where there's a space. And it's very important to start massaging into those edges right there. Into those, um, into those spaces because that's actually going to be the texture of your mold on the side. That's going to be the stone. And you don't want any bubbles on there. And then just to get some extra bubbles out of there, we're gonna hammer the sides a little bit with a mallet. And now, once we're done with that, we're gonna cover it with plastic overnight. And that's to keep the, uh, the moisture inside and make sure that the mold stays very, very strong so the concrete doesn't weaken. And um, you don't want to take this out any more than 24 hours after you put it in. It's possible to take it out after four hours in very warm temperature, but we recommend like a minimum of 12 hours just to, just to make sure. It's 12 hours later, let's take it out and see what happens. Now, after 12 hours, you're not really going to need any type of diamond um, diamond files, anything like that. You could just use a regular one. And now on the corners, we're going to have these little imperfections where there's a little bit of concrete sticking out kind of. We're gonna fix that. Like these. You just wanna sand it down very lightly. Don't put too much pressure or else you're gonna ruin it.
once we've done that, we take it and wash it down with water. And now we gotta take our SCR and mix it with a three to one ratio for GFRC. And we're gonna put three parts water. Shake your GFRC. I'm in your SCR. One part SCR. And now I'll take our SCR and just wash the countertop with it with the sponge. And what that's going to do is, what well, one, it cleans the mold, uh, the, the countertop completely so you get all the excess, everything off. And then it's going to open up the pores so that all the uh, secondary color stains that you put on there, all the sealers, they're really going to get in there and um, it's going to be on there tight. And then one last time, wash it off with water. Now we're just going to leave this to dry on two stilts like this so that it dries everywhere underneath also. I noticed that a problem we're having is these holes right here. That's because the texture of the stone is very violent. We have none of them on the top. Um, the texture of the stone is a little bit too violent and uh, it's creating some holes in there. And how we're gonna fix that is the precast slurry. This one. That was a bit tricky. It's a bit tricky, it's a bit tedious, because we have to figure out what type of color, how much amount of color we're going to need to put into there. You always want to start off little. You don't want to start putting in too much. Because you can always add more you can't take out. You have the color, the same color that you had back then uh, when you were mixing the precast. You mix this up, make sure that everything's all uh, all mixed together. Now we're going to do a little bit of a test. Take that. And you want it to resemble more of like a peanut butter type of consistency. I think that I added a little bit too much color. How we're gonna see when we take a little bit onto the side. And you can either wait for this to dry out or you can use a heat gun to make the process a little bit quicker. Which is what I'm gonna do. 
and we're trying to make this color match this color. I don't like this. This is way too dark. It does not match the color we have on the countertop. So into our original mix, I'm just gonna add a little bit more slurry. So my heat gun just broke. We're gonna have to wait for this to dry manually. So this took about 20 minutes to dry and I think it's the perfect color that I have the ratio. Take a look, put it next to it. That's as close as we're gonna get. Now we'll take our slurry that we mixed up and put just enough to fill that little hole. You don't want much else. It looks a little bit darker when it's wet, so that might put you off, don't worry. As long as when it dried during your test, it looks good, you'll be fine and take it and you want to rub it in and make sure that you keep rubbing it so that you don't lose the actual texture of the stone. The more you rub this in, the less, uh, the less smooth the surface that you slurried will be and the better it's going to look. And the pot life for this slurry is around 15 minutes. So you have 15 minutes to work with this. Don't make batches that are too big. You can always add the water to your made powder a little bit at a time. You can see there's no more bubbles once I finish with the slurry. Now sometimes you could have a problem on the sides with these little glass fibers sticking out. An easy way to fix that is with a blowtorch. Just take it. Now it's clean. Now let's say you don't like the color of your countertop. You take your eco stain, we're gonna be using espresso, the color, and you mix up a one to four ratio and put it inside of a bottle like this. Shake the bottle. Change the color. And then we wait for it to dry. Now a lot of times when you spray it on, like I just did, um, you're playing with like a 50-50 chance of it actually looking good when it turns out. Mine did not look good. The blotches that it made didn't look anything like natural stone. So I'm just going over it with a uh, cloth soaked in the actual stain. And I'm going over it like this. In some places if I need to, I'll put a little bit more in. Now I didn't like how it looked, so I wiped it down a little bit with a wet paper towel. And then I followed up with a dry one so that the um, 
so that you don't see a lot of streaks on there. You don't see that it's actually, like, been done with a paper towel. All right, and for the sealer, instead of the 327, we're going to be using the PC-12 instead, because this is a solvent-based. It's a 3 to 1 ratio. Again. Three parts part A. All right, once we have the sealer mixed up, take it and we apply it with the roller. <laughs> 